Peter Semyonich, the greatest seducer of other men's wives that I've ever met. He was successful, all women for that matter, but there was a special challenge to young, beautiful women married to rich, prominent men. I can never do him justice. Let him tell you in his own words. <laughs> if I may say so myself, I am the greatest seducer of other men's wives that I've ever met. I say this not boastfully, but as a matter of record, the staggering figures speak for themselves. For those of you men in the audience tonight, Instead of playing this highly satisfying but often dangerous game, I urge you, take out a pen and paper and take notes. <laughs> I am going to explain my methods. In defense, married women may do likewise, but will do them little good if they happen to be your chosen target. My method has never failed. Now then, in order to seduce a man's wife, there are three vital characteristics. They are Patience, more patience, and still more patience. For those of you men who do not have the strength of character to wait, I urge you, take up growing, bicycling, perhaps. Seducing is enough for you. Now then, in order to seduce a man's wife, you must, I repeat, must, stay as far away from her as possible. Pay her practically no attention at all. Ignore her. If you must, we will get to her through the husband. For you in the audience tonight, you get to witness a practical demonstration. For as it just so happens, I am madly and deeply in love this week. <laughs> My heart pounds with excitement, knowing that at any minute she shall pass through this park with her husband. Every fiber of my being comes to throw my arms around her and embrace her with all the passion in my heart. But observe how master works. I shall be cool, almost to the point of freezing. My heart of hearts and spouse approaches. Ah, Peter Semionich. You here. Oh, my dear Nikolai, how very good to see you. Notice how I'm not looking at her. Thank you. Thank you. You sly young. Here, I'll just do one. Excuse me. Have you met my wife for dinner? Of course, we yes. have. <laughs> <laughs> I sat next to that dinner at the bed last week. Hurry down. I don't know if it's trying to set you a bit of a. I must warn you that he is a scoundrel, a notorious bachelor, and an exceptional sort of that's the best I can say to you, Peter. Oh, Nikki, you exaggerate. Madame, good to see you again. We were just taking a stroll. If you're not busy, why don't you walk with us? Oh, that's very kind of you. But it seems my legs are like tours of Greenwich, for a new love has entered my life. Until she is out of my sight, I fear I would not be able to move. Too much, do you think? <laughs> As I said, be patient. Fantastic. You never cease to amaze me. Pretty, I suppose. <laughs> suppose glorious. Suppose magnificent, and you will suppose correctly. Any complications? As usual, a husband. It seems my cause is hopeless. Nonsense. I'm placing my money on you, Peter. And you know I never bet unless I'm sure of winning. Well, we're off. Good hunting, by the way. Beautifully <laughs> done, don't you think? I'm sometimes awed by the work of a true professional. Did you notice how our eyes barely met, and yet how much she knows about me already? A. I'm a popular bachelor. B. A gifted sportsman. A nice contrast to her sedentary husband. C, a man in love, always titillating the romantic type. And D, a dangerous man for ladies. 
quite frankly, at this point, she's disgusted with me. Because A, I'm a brat and a scoundrel. B, because I'm shamelessly frank in my intentions. And C, because she thinks that she's not the one that I'm in love with. <laughs> Excuse me if I'm slightly blown away by my own feelings. <laughs> Are you getting all this down? It gets pretty complicated from here on in. <laughs> now then, next step, hypnosis. Not hypnosis with the eyes, but with the poison of your tongue. Much like a venomous snake moving in for the kill. And what's more, the best channel is through the husband himself. Witness how I accidentally run into him at the club one day. <sighs> yeah. Yeah.
Good night, Good night, my love. Oh, I'm spelled out by my own powers. <laughs> I succeeded not only keeping her interest, causing her heart to flutter at the mention of my name, the same man she called loads of not two minutes ago. And all this was accomplished, mind you, while I was at home, taking a nice, fine scented bath. Lunch in the next day was not only nourishing, but productive. <laughs> By the way, old man, I ran into the cross off the other day. The artist, it seems he's been commissioned by some wealthy Russian prince to paint the head of a typical Russian beauty, and he asked me to look out for a model for him. Well, I said I knew just a girl, but I wouldn't dare ask her myself. Would you consider asking your wife? I think my wife would. To be the model, of course. That lovely head of hers deserves to be immortalized for the whole world. For the whole world? Hmm. See what she means. Good idea. I'll discuss it with him. Look, I said I would discuss it with you. What do you think? I think it's nonsense. I mean, did he actually say a typical Russian beauty? Precisely. And that it would be a damn shame if that exquisite face was the chance to become immortalized for all the world. That's exactly what he said. He gets carried away by his own voice. Those exact words. He didn't leave anything out. Oh, yes. That lovely face. I love that. That lovely face. He said that a number of times, I think. He does go on, doesn't he? How many times do you say? Once, twice, what? <laughs> it's hard to remember. It's not important. But in the future, I do wish you'd write something down. <laughs> Have you seen me near her? Have you seen me talk to her? Has any correspondence passed between us at all? No, my dear peoples. And yet she hangs on my every word, uttered by her husband. Awesome, isn't it? <laughs> we apply this treatment for two to three weeks. Her resistance is weakening. But weakening? Weakening. It might seem to be elsewhere, if you ask me. Or some woman in the look of her. What woman? Has he mentioned any woman in particular? Oh, no. He's too discreet for that. Don't suspect your good name at any cost. Instead, he speaks of you all day. Poor fool. I'm beginning to feel sorry for him. It's really none of our concern. Did you invite him to dinner tomorrow? <laughs> He's busy. The day after that? Busy. Next week? Next month? When? Doesn't the man eat? He says he's involved on a very important project, and it will be months before he can see it. <coughs> he did say that with uh, patience and persistence. Good things will come to him. By the way, he thinks you should go on the stage. Me? The stage? Why? That doesn't have his name. Well, he says, just a moment. I don't want to misquote him. No, no, take your time. Try to get it as accurately as possible. <laughs> ah, yes. He said, with such an attractive appearance, such intelligence, it's a sin for her to be just a housewife. Here. He said that. And that. Ordinary demands don't exist for such women. Nikki, I don't think I want to hear it anymore. Natures like that should not be bound by time and space. Nikki, I implore you, please stop. And then he says, if I were so busy, I'd take her away from you. You said that? Yes, right there. Nikki, what did you say to me? It's important I know what you said just then. Who well, I said, take her then. I'm not going to try to rule over her. You mustn't discuss me with him anymore. I beg you never to mention my name to him ever again. What I do, my love? He's the one who always brings up the subject. He actually accused me the other day of not understanding you. He killed at me. She's an exceptional creature, strong, seeking her way out. If I were to gain you, I would put her in a novel. The passionate angel, I would call it. No man is weird. Definitely weird. Delivering my love letters <laughs> and seals them with kisses and calls me weird? Oh, I tell you. Now, let's see if we've got so far. The woman is definitely consumed with passion for me. She is sure that I am the only man who truly understands her. Her yawning, disinterested husband transmits my remarks, but it's my voice that she hears. My words are singing her heart. The sweet poison is doing its work. There's no room for mercy in this seducing business. I am 
how that is. Observe how deftly the final strokes have been served. For those of you weak of heart, I urge you, look away. <laughs> no, Nikki, I don't want to hear any more. Not another word from him. Nothing. But exactly. That's what he said. He begged me to tell you nothing. He said he knew because of your sweet, sympathetic nature, you would worry to hear of someone else's distress. Wars, he's gloomy, nervous, morbid, and in death for the dead. No, but why? Hello, man. No, man. He said he had no true friend, no relative, not a soul to understand him. But doesn't he know I, we, understand him perfectly? Doesn't he know how much I, we, appreciate his communion with him daily? Doesn't he know how much I, Sweet, you heard to be with him? You and I? I tried to make that clear. I again urged him to come home to dinner with me, but he said he can't face people. He so impressed he faces in the public garden, where he met him, every night. What time? Between eight and nine. By the way, we're invited to the box event tomorrow. Is it a all right for you? No. I'm... Visiting Aunt Sophia tomorrow. She's ill. I'll be there at nine. Or the last bit. No, 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 that's not necessary. Please, no applause. I, I could not have done it alone. I share the honor of my aid and accomplice. Her husband. Oh, he wooed her so successfully. There is no care to have brought her here fast enough. She ran all the way. Those of you in the audience, I have to ask that you busy yourselves with your schedules or such next couple minutes. This last part is private. And I am, after all, a gentleman. Oh, my dear. Oh, my sweet dear, last night. No. Not a word. Time's out, please. Not to leave her with my heart. For weeks now, I've been in torment. You've used my husband as a clever and devious device to rouse my passion. Which I freely admit have been linked in torment for the past seven years. Whether you're sincere or not, you have awakened in me desires and longings I've never dreamed were possible. You appeal to my vanity and have to come. You stir my thoughts on full pleasures and my weakness. You attack my every vulnerability, and I surrender. I'm yours, dear son, Yarish. Did you want me? But let me have this. I love my husband dearly. He's not a passionate man, or he's a remotely romantic. I like to gather the degree of the heights of ecstasy with the depth of anguish. We have an even marriage, moderate and comfortable. And in accepting this condition, and in full measure of his devoted love, I have been happy. I come to you knowing that once you take in your arms, my marriage and my life to Nikki will be destroyed for all time. I rely on your strength of character. I am too weak and too sheltered to make the choice. The option is yours, Peter. Whichever you choose will make me both miserable and eternally grateful. <laughs> I beg you not to use me as an amusement, although even with that knowledge I will not succeed. I'm yours to do as you will, Peter. If you want me, open your arms now and I will come to you. But if you love me, turn your back and I will leave and never see or speak to you again. The option. My dearest, sweetest love of my life is yours. I wait. God bless you, Peter Semyonis. I hope life brings you the happiness you've just brought to me.
Peter Simeon, the former seducer of the midwives. And that day on, turns attention to young, beautiful, single woman only. And so one day, the confirmed bachelor found him married. He is, to this day, a very happy man, except perhaps on the occasion that some dashing young officer tells him how lovely he finds his wife. Thank <laughs> you.